Introductory course on physical therapy. This course is designed to improve the basic concepts regarding this field. Here are the few points that we will discuss in this entire course, definition and history of physical therapy. The profession of physical therapy, current practice, pain assessment and outcome measures, medical terminologies, introduction of physiotherapy modalities, musculoskeletal disorders presentation. Common musculoskeletal disorders and treatments, patient positioning and bed mobility, gait training and assistive devices, introduction to therapeutic exercises. This course is based on a series of different videos. Let's start with the definition of physical therapy. If we talk about the definition of physical therapy, it is a branch of rehabilitative health that uses specially designed exercises and equipment to help patients regain or improve their physical abilities. Physical therapy includes mechanical methods such as heat, light, different modalities, exercises, and massage for treating injury or disease. A physical therapist will conduct an examination that will include a series of tests and measures as part of an exam to determine a patient's limitations. These impairments or limitations are the reasons why the patient is unable to perform their normal activities. Impaired range of motion, strength, and balance are classic examples of impairments addressed by physical therapy. These restrict a patient's ability to perform certain tasks such as squatting, jumping, or standing on one leg. These, in turn, result in a functional limitations. Stretching, strengthening, manual therapy, exercise, and conditioning approaches will be employed to correct the impairments that are producing these functional limits, allowing the patient to improve mobility and strength, reduce discomfort, and return to their previous level of function. History of physical therapy Physicians like Hippocrates and later Galenus are believed to have been the first practitioners of physical therapy, advocating massage, manual therapy techniques, and hydrotherapy to treat people in 460 BC. In 1851, the term physiotherapy first appeared in its German form, physiotherapy, in an article written by Dr. Lorenz Gleich, a military physician from Bavaria. In 1916, during the polio epidemic, the young women began to treat polio patients with residual paralysis by using passive movements. Realizing the need of the hour, physiotherapists developed manual muscle testing for assessing the strength of the muscle and thereby implementing muscle re-education techniques for weaker muscles. If we talk about the history of this profession during World War I and World War II, the field of physical therapy expanded dramatically. During these large-scale battles, there were major improvements in medicine that saved many lives. Previously, it was assumed that disabilities are permanent and would not improve with any medical interventions or treatments. This was due to the fact that the majority of impairments and disabilities at the time were associated with the elderly population. But after World Wars, many young men returned home as disabled veterans because of the young age of some soldiers. 
it became clear that special care would be required. Physiotherapy was required for wounded soldiers who returned home with amputations, burns, cold injuries, wounds, fractures, and nerve and spinal cord injuries. The first school of physical therapy was established in Washington, D.C. Following the outbreak of World War I, research catalyzed the profession of physical therapy movement. The first physical therapy research was published in the United States in 1921. The profession of physical therapy, current practice, Physical therapy is the profession that deals with restoring function that has been lost due to illness or disease. It pervades all aspects of healthcare field. According to American Physical Therapy Association, it allows patients to get direct evaluation and treatment from a licensed physical therapist without the need for a prescription or a referral from a physician. Career Opportunities and Skill Sets Physical therapy encompasses a wide range of healthcare services, including outpatient clinics, fitness centers, rehabilitation hospitals, hospice care facilities, school-based therapy, senior retirement communities, subacute care facilities and acute care facilities acute care facilities these can range from a huge metropolitan hospital to a rural one but they also include specialty hospitals which may specialize in one type of care or many such as burns pediatrics or sports medicine Outpatient clinics, these are the physical therapy clinics. They might be privately run by a physical therapist or can be managed by groups or organizations. Patients may get direct access or may referred by a physician after a sports injury, motor vehicle accident, or surgery. Fitness centers some large fitness centers have their own physical therapy team on site for gym members. This allows physical therapists and personal trainers who specialize in fitness, weight loss, and muscle strength to work together more effectively. Subacute care facilities Patients in subacute facilities frequently require ventilator considerable medication via an intravenous route or have additional needs that necessitate ongoing nursing monitoring. Physiotherapists also play an important role in patient positioning, bed mobility, and chest physiotherapy at this stage. School-based therapy, this area of physical therapy, is concerned with children who have not reached their developmental milestones. Milestones are physical movements performed by children, such as their first step, first word, or ability to roll. They are all related to a specific time period. Therapists will provide treatment to students while they are on school grounds. Hospice care facilities these facilities help the patients who are almost near the end of their lives. According to their doctors, the patient's diseases are at terminal stage and they may only have a few days or months to live. Bed mobility, transfer, bed source prevention, and basic exercises are all things in which a physical therapist can help the patient. Treatments will differ from patient to patient, and therapists will typically provide extensive training to the patient's family so that they can care for the patient in his or her final hours. 
Rehabilitation hospitals Rehabilitation hospitals are dynamic and high-powered treatment-based facilities that are often for the younger patients for high-level therapy so that they can return to their function more quickly and successfully. Treatment usually consists of a combination of physical, occupational, and speech therapy sessions that range from 2 to 3 hours each day. Patients with specific diagnosis, such as stroke, traumatic brain injury, amputation, or cardiovascular surgery, are frequently admitted in rehab hospitals. Pain Assessment and Outcome Measures What is pain? Pain is a highly unpleasant physical sensation caused by illness or injury. Recording the patient's pain level will be important to the therapist regarding treatment. The patient's relative pain level may affect the therapist plan. PQRST Pain Assessment Method The PQRST method of pain assessment is a useful tool for describing, assessing, and documenting a patient's pain accurately. Because pain is subjective, self-report is regarded as the gold standard and most accurate method of measuring pain. P stands for provocation. Ask such questions from the patient, like, what were you doing when the pain began? What makes it better or worse? What appears to be the cause? Stress. Position certain activities what relieves it medications massage heat cold changing position being active resting and what aggravates it movement bending lying down walking standing q stands for quality what does it feel like use words to describe the pain such as aching burning Crippling, dull, gnawing, irritated, sharp, stabbing, tender, crushing, throbbing, nauseating, shooting, twisting or stretching etc. R stands for region. What is the source of the pain? Is the pain radiating? Where? Does it appear to travel, move around? Did it start elsewhere and is now localized to one spot? S stands for severity. The two most widely used methods to measure the pain are the verbal numerical rating scale and the visual analog scale. The verbal numerical rating scale is a common 0 to 10 pain scale with 0 being no pain at all and 10 being the worst, a horrible pain that will necessitate emergency treatment. The visual analog scale is a validated, subjective measure for acute and chronic pain. Scores are recorded by making a handwritten mark on a 10 cm line that represents a continuum between no pain and worst pain. T stands for timing. When at what time did the pain start? How long did it last? How often does it occur? Hourly? Daily? Weekly? Or monthly? Is it sudden or gradual? What were you doing when you first experienced it? When do you usually experience it? Daytime? Night? Or in early morning? Are you ever awakened by it? Does it lead to anything else? Is it accompanied by other signs and symptoms? Does it ever occur before, during or after meals? Does it occur seasonally? All these questions are important to correctly identify the cause of the pain. Outcome measures. An outcome measure is a tool that is used to assess a patient's current condition. An outcome measure provides baseline data prior to the administration of any intervention. 
Once treatment has begun, the same tool can be used in serial assessments to see if the patient has improved. Lower Extremity Functional Scale The Lower Extremity Functional Scale is used to assess patient's initial function, ongoing progress, and outcome in a variety of lower extremity conditions. The lower extremity functional scale is a questionnaire containing 20 questions about a person's ability to perform everyday tasks. Neck Disability Index and Low Back Pain Scale Neck Disability Index assesses the patient's function and the disability caused by neck pain. The Low Back Pain Scale is a functional disability assessment tool for patients with back disorders. Medical Terminologies The origins of medical terminology can be traced back to Greek and Latin. This allows it to be truly universal across multiple languages. Medical terminology is a distinct language of its own. It was designed to describe the human body, including pathologies, diseases, and processes. Here is a short video for better understanding of these terms. Anatomical position Anatomical position is the description of any region or part of the body in a specific stance. In the anatomical position, the body is upright, directly facing the observer, feet flat and directed forward. The upper limbs are at the body sides with the palms facing forward. Relative location in the anatomical position. Many terms are used to describe relative location on the body. Cranial refers to features closer to the head. While caudal refers to features closer to the feet. The front of the body is referred to as anterior or ventral. While the back is referred to as posterior or dorsal. Proximal and distal describe relative position on the limbs. Proximal refers to a feature that is closer to the torso. While distal refers to a feature that is closer to the fingers or toes. Medial and lateral refer to position relative to the midline. Midline is a vertical line drawn through the center of the forehead, down through the belly button to the floor. Medial indicates a feature is closer to the sline, while lateral indicates features further from the sline. All body movements occur in different planes and around different axes. A plane is an imaginary flat surface running through the body. The anatomical planes are different lines used to divide the human body. There are three planes commonly used. Sagittal, coronal and transverse. Sagittal plane, a vertical line which divides the body into a left section and a right section. Flexion and extension occur in sagittal plane. Coronal plane. A vertical line which divides the body into a front anterior section and back posterior section. Abduction and adduction movements occur in coronal plane. Transverse plane. A horizontal line which divides the body into an upper superior section and a lower inferior section. Rotation occurs in transverse plane. An axis is an imaginary line at right angles to the plane about which the body rotates or spins. There are three axes of movement around which the body or body parts rotate. Frontal axis. This line runs from left to right through the center of the body. It lies perpendicular to the front sagittal plane, sagittal axis or anteroposterior axis. This line runs from front to back through the center of the body. It lies perpendicular to the frontal plane. Vertical axis. This line runs from top to bottom through the center of the body. It is perpendicular to the transverse plane.